Boys and girls, welcome back. I'm here with Jordan, and we're looking at some pictures that we got from uh, one of our friends in Canada, who, um, I don't know where they got them from, but, uh, but we're looking at basically the frunk of the Cybertruck. So we're gonna have a chance to look at the frunk and what's going on in here. And then we're also gonna have a look at some of the interior, clever interior things that they've done. So the first thing uh, that maybe I'd like to bring up is that both Jordan and I think that this is kind of um, a test vehicle of some sort. Um, what you're looking at here is a bunch of doodads that normally wouldn't go in. You can see jumper cables. You can see the uh, jumper, jumper box. box. Yeah, and, uh, and why not? So kind of take that and this, uh, there's another cable coming. Up. You can take those out of your mind's eye. We're going to be talking about what we can actually see and identify. Um, and uh, so let's look at the other one. <laughs> Looks like a guy's got a tool bag there. Okay, this is the one we're really going to concentrate on. And um, I'm going to tell you what little I know. Um, that and that is a mystery to both uh, Jordan and I. You can see that they're, <clears throat> they're trying to jumper the battery. We think that's what's going on up here. But at the end of the day, um, there's three components here that, uh, four counting the cabling that really don't make any sense at all. Yeah. But let's, uh, let's start with what we do know. Why don't you uh, go over the uh, cooling system? Yeah, so if you look really closely right here, it might be pick, uh, difficult to pick up on camera, but it says Super Manifold V2. So versus any of the teardowns that we've done thus far on the Model S, the 22 Model Y, or the Model Y prior to that, this is a, a next generation or at least iteration of the whole Super Manifold system. So I'm really interested when we get ours in um, to do a deep dive in that. <laughs> Looks like some of the electronics they brought forward facing, some of the orientations of either the receiver dryer or the accumulators mm -hmm. in the systems have changed orientation. Um, but quite, quite a bit of changes, just a quick visual, right? It's kind of a grainy photo looking at this. So I'm excited to see what specifically. And then the whole carriage system. So on the Model S, it was the Super Beam. On the Model Y, it was a stamped steel and a uh, roll, roll form tube steel, right? Weldment that went from shock tower to shock tower. But this looks actually like either a high pressure or a low pressure permanent mold die casting up yeah. top. Yeah. What do you uh, think, Sandy? Yeah, I, I think that if I had to make a guess, I would suggest that maybe they go to uh, magnesium. Magnesium is a good, um, a good casting that you can make very, very thin. And, um, and it's great for absorbing um, vibration and shock and whatnot. It's good for crash worthiness. The, the other thing that, um, uh, the, well, one of the things that you've got to look at and, and go, oh boy, is this, uh, this doodad right here. This is the single um, wiper mechanism. So this has got a great big giant single wiper. My guess is it's going to be similar to what, um, what uh, the guys at uh, Mercedes had for a long time, where it would come over and sweep a, a, huge amount of the, uh, a huge amount of the windscreen. And the way that I think that is because here's this little bell crank right here. Yep. This bell crank right here is attached to the motor. It'll be driving this and it'll give it that second uh, ab like, ability to have a second pass. It's like a yeah. cam feature, right? Yeah, so right. it's not a perfect sweep, but rather it's got a hump yeah. in the movement, right? Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. So anyway, we were, um, we were looking at uh, the castings. We knew about that, it, that's not a big surprise. But what do you think these white things are? Do you think they're like dampers or what? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's probably synthetic, like a PET fiber yeah. that they're heat staking on the back of a wheel liner for NVH, right? Mm -hmm. So it is, you know, looking at the Model 3 Highland that came out, right? A lot of the changes that Tesla is touting in terms of percent improvement is NVH, right? And so I think that Tesla is going to be making a little bit more of a concerted effort, especially on a vehicle like the Cybertruck where they want to go out with a bang here. I think they're going to be making some pretty significant improvements in, in NVH here, right? We're seeing them isolate everything to the casting, um, meaning... Well, that's, that's actually... Why don't you talk more about that pedestal, or what we think might be a pedestal yeah. pulling up the... Yeah, that's a good segue right here. So looking at the EAC compressor, that's this kind of gray uh, circle piece here, or cylindrical piece that we're seeing right here. If you look right at the top of that, it looks like a cast aluminum neck coming up from the top of it, which follows the split line of the compressor. So presumably that's now cast in, where on previous iterations, 
the mount that that interfaced directly with the super beam or casting was a separate piece. So that level of integration are those are things that when when we talk to OEM Sandy, right, we're we're always like, hey, if you can make the part provide its own mounting feature, that's the way to go versus providing right. a separate bracket. So even Tesla, you know, who generally does a pretty good job at bracket omission and previous iterations still had a bracket. But what I'm seeing here, at least again with a grainy photo, is looking like they're doing quite a bit to get rid of that bracket. Yeah, well, the other thing that I think is kind of interesting is I'm looking at this and I'm pretty sure that it's probably got four bolts holding it to this, um, this upper portion here, but um, it looks like it's a single pedestal. If that's the case, uh, then this is in essence what you do in university is try and balance the load for something that's going to have a lot of shock going on. It, it, this, this dances uh, the jig here. And rather than put it right back into the car, you might want to just let it dance in here and, um, and that, uh, that pedestal right there would nullify the, the amount of vibration that would go into the vehicle. Yeah. The other, I think the other two things in this area that kind of catch my eye are one, integration of some brake components onto this, I'll call it a super casting in, replace of the, in replacement of the, the extruded version we saw in the Model S. So they're taking the reservoir. I'm suspecting some other components, perhaps master cylinder, um, maybe either nested packaging uh, wise or potentially even partially mounted to this piece right here. So they're really leveraging in Tesla fashion, everything that they can off of this beam to include the next item, which is the 12 volt battery. So that looks like the, a very similar lithium ion 12 volt battery that we saw in the Model S, but they changed orientation. I'm seeing a lot of like 90 degree, in some cases, 120 degree movement and rotation of components and the battery is no different, right? So it looks like they're making a concerted effort to put everything in, installed in the X direction rather than in the Z direction. And my suspicion as to why is because if you look at a top-down view from this vehicle versus the Model S, everything is housed underneath the plenum on this vehicle. Whereas in the Model S and the Model Y, you, if you looked in a bird's eye view, you had access to the two shock towers from the top down. So one key difference, and we're seeing components now with the exception of the EAC compressor, a lot of the fasteners right, are coming in the X direction versus in the Z direction. And normally that's something we don't like to see, but in this particular case, this would be a whole lot easier for the operator and definitely a whole lot easier for any kind of maintenance that you'd have to do. Sure. Now, I, there was one other thing that I wanted to point out, which is kind of a surprise. Um, and that's all these stamp brackets here. And now, I'm not sure, like this is kind of like a, an anodizing kind of operation that you do on aluminum. So I'm going to assume that these are aluminum, but that's what's holding up the, um, the fender, essentially. fender essentially. But, but it's also part of their exoskeleton, kind of. So this is uh, kind of... Um, interesting, I've never seen that before. This uh, injection molded um, intrusion beam, because that's what it is, looks to me like this is gonna be mm, nylon and uh, glass and a lot of glass. Uh, the way it looks to me, it's probably 50% glass. Yeah, it's probably, you're right, it's probably like a long glass fill, but if you look ever so closely, my, my suspicion is if you see these marks here, this is an over molded steel. Um, oh, because very well be. yeah, because yeah. this is managing that yeah. whole front closure. Here's the striker right for the front yeah, coming down. Could be. Um, and that's also tying in these shotguns or these upper load beams. But I'm with you, Sandy, especially, you know, when Elon first came out and he said exoskeleton, right? Everyone's mind says, oh, all this stuff goes away. Yeah. But here we are. Mm. Yeah, um, this tells me that yeah, this may be just a chunk of plastic and Maybe there's steel here and maybe, because uh, what I'm looking at is, it kind of looks like this and see there that rib, it's going from here to there. Yeah. So who knows? We, we got the best we've got. Actually, let's go back one slide if we can. And um, you were talking about what you thought of uh, the uh, vent here. Yeah, so like there's, th I think there's three key observations here. We'll take them from the top to bottom, right? So one, if you see this little window right here, this 
this to me may suggest that they're bringing lidar back. This is or where, radar they had, or radar, yeah. right? This this is where that would want to live. Um, oftentimes, right? There's a window there in terms of service. It may want to be a thinner material, like thinner than the rest of the fascia. So that may be radar. Below that, in this grill opening, right? We we've if you've seen other videos like the Ionic Five, for example, we talk about a surface AGS, the impact to the overall drag of coefficient of the vehicle. It seems like in this case, Tesla's still opting for more of a, what I would call B surface, meaning those active grill shutters are gonna be behind the primary A surface of the fascia. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a decision on a cyber truck, right? If they're expecting to be in brush in an off-road condition, you may want those protected, which may explain why they're doing it here. And plus, their other vehicles did that in the past. And then the third thing is this like lower valance piece or this lower fascia kind of in the, this front splitter area, if you will. If you look right there, Sandy, I don't know what your thoughts are. It looks like that might be a separate piece, maybe movable. It either rocks down or it drops down. It's hard to say which. Again, this is really hard to make a determination on, but it's obvious that this little chunk right here is definitely not attached to that. Right. Maybe they, uh, they come close to each other, but that gap and the fact that this part of that louver here is, um, is you can, you, I don't know how we can get it, but you can see right down here that there's a, a black mark telling me that some movement goes on there. That's, I almost asked Aaron to spin yeah. it so that we could see it, but it's not cat, oh, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, can't do everything. Yeah. You know, yeah, but I, I I agree with you in that it's separated. I'm I'm suspecting that they're they're probably doing like what F-150 and Ram are doing with their full size trucks, where they're bringing an air dam right at certain highway speeds or even um, just surface streets. Right, they'll bring that air dam down and improve the, the drag coefficient. Right, and then yeah. bring it back up so that- um, You don't rip it off. You don't rip it off when you're going through the jungle. Yeah. Right. Okay, so I think we've uh, touched on everything we can find there. Let's go to the interior and have a look. So this, uh, this is kind of interesting. It's very clean and people have heard me say before, I'm, I'm not really a big fan of a lot of razzle dazzle on the uh, IP, so this is uh, about as plain as you can get. Nice straight lines if you're into that. Uh, if we look here, this looks like the same screen. We've got the uh, yoke type steering wheel. Um, the, uh, the cup holder's interesting. Um, I mean, they've tried to get as much theme as possible. Yeah, I mean, I agree. In my opinion, what they did is they took the concept of the Cybertruck, right, and very a minimal number of surfaces and panels, and they use that th to their advantage, right? So yeah. instead of having on a typical passenger car, all these bolster lines and, you know, LED um, light bars and light tubes and things along those lines, they'd clean the whole thing up. And as a customer of a Cybertruck, you might just say, oh, cool, Cybertruck theme inside. But Tesla's laughing all the way to the bank because yeah. they're giving you half the number of panels for the same price. Yeah. So anyway, looking at this as well, it looks to me like here's your button uh, to open the door. Um, this is a little far forward normally to open and close doors, but maybe they got a kicker on it. Um, the, um, the two panels here would be for induction charging your cell phone, I'm guessing. Right. Um, it's hard to tell what else is going on here. It looks like the seats are perfed, um, perforated uh, at least that one is on the inside so that would be for comfort and i think this thing has front seat uh cooling right heating and cooling as far as i know yeah and the perforated seats to your point sandy would support that for sure yeah. on the ventilated yeah. side you know the other thing that catches my eye and, and people may just kind of look past it but is the quarter glass right with the geometry of the cyber truck you know, it's not just a, a cool style that they just decided to do and, you know, it worked perfectly. Here's some of the trade-offs that they needed to make, right? If, you, if you're driving a vehicle, there's something called 360 degree obscuration. So if you look at a vehicle as 360, looking around it, um, they, they measure the percentage of obscuration, you know, these cones coming from your eye lips of what you can see outside. And with the design of the Cybertruck, Right, the, the flatter that this piece lays, 
in terms of a picture, what you can see, the more that that's going to take up in your visual obscuration. And so in terms of being able to see outside, if they were to close this up, that is an absolutely enormous blind spot. And this pillar by itself is a massive blind spot. And so, you know, although it's got a massive front window and it's a big vehicle, you've got a commanding position of the road, it doesn't mean that your outward visibility is going to be great. You know, they tried to compensate with the quarter glass, but that's um, it's not as easy as it sounds just to lay an A pillar down like that. Yeah. Well, the other thing that I think is kind of interesting is uh, you don't see any stocks. Um, we've uh, we've been told um, that um, you know the turn signals are built into the uh, thumb wheels, and um, I think that's a great. I don't even know. Actually, I, I think it's the they, little, they did buttons, yeah, right? Uh, just like the buttons, Model S, yeah. right there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So for me, uh, getting rid of anything that sticks out or could be potentially broken off is a good idea. It looks like they moved the horn to the center as well, which is a good idea. Um, yeah, everything here looks uh, looks fine. It's too bad that they didn't have a maybe glove box open, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Anyway, what's the last uh, what's the last picture? Oh yeah, well here we are looking. Um, uh, rearward, um, I, this is my first view of this, so all yeah. I can see is that the seats are perfed and... Um, I can't wait to see the headliner. You know, the geometry on this, you look at how sharp the angles are around this C-pillar going up towards what would conventionally be a headliner. These geometries, one, I suspect this might be a separate piece, meaning rear header may be a separate piece from yeah. the side roof rail here. I can't even imagine doing it any other way. No, and two, I don't know that it's even like a conventionally thermal formed headliner. I think they may be doing injection molded, um, just like they're doing on the, the Model uh, Y. And the, yep, but um, I think they may have to add some additional parts given the pretty extreme and acute geometry they have here. Well, I can see some sort of a split here and I can see some sort of a grill there. Maybe that's a speaker or something. I'm yeah. not sure. But uh, but there's a lot going on um, that it's too bad we don't have. This looks like Alcantara. Yeah, I think they've got some Alcantara, some suede, faux suede in there. Anything else you want to tell us about? No, I think that was a great wrap up. Just, I guess if you're interested, stay tuned. We're about to tear one down soon. Yeah, as soon as we can get one, which brings us to the other point. If you have an early delivery and you'd like to um, sell it, uh, we would like to buy it. So uh, keep those, uh, keep us in mind, uh, just in case, you know, you have 15 or 20 on order and uh, they're, you know, gonna be close together. Wait a couple more months. Uh, help us out because uh, uh, I know where we are. I mean, we were only seconds after the uh, bell rang, but uh, there was thousands of people that uh, decided to pop in for uh, uh, for one of the one of the cyber trucks. So, anyways, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you again in the future soon. Bye.